Finally, we're going, and thank you for being patient. My name is Jan. I'm going to talk to you about the law of transmutation. Now, when I studied this, this, these principles, one of the things that, stri that, that, that struck me first was the power of the human mind. And so, about four years ago, I was in LA. That's where I qualified for the first level as, as a transformation and life coach. And I sat down with my coach at that time and I wrote something down. Now, the big words aside, law of transmutation is just meaning everything you think becomes a thing. So everything was created twice, first on thought and then in form. Now, I'm going to not apologize for quoting from the Bible. I'm not going to apologize for quoting a Gandhi. I'm not going to apologize for quoting a Buddha. I'm not meaning to put religion onto you. I'm meaning to show you that history has showed us this, and it's time for us with COVID that woke us up to pay attention. So what do I do? How do I move this now? Can you oh, just enter? Okay. All right, so what do I do? That's my, that's my purpose. And just to demonstrate to you, I wrote this with my coach in, in LA in a boardroom four years ago. And when I wrote it, it was not nearly what, I did, what I'm doing today. I said, I live to see the broken healed, the suffering prosper, and the lost loved. I live to see the world vibrate on the frequency of fullness. And I live to witness your transformation and celebrate you as a work of art. That's why I live. That's why I'm here. Why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. Because I believe in the human mind. I also believe in what breathes you, what keeps you alive, and what makes you amazing and significant. And so the journey continued. And these words actually became my truth. I'm going to read it again, because I'm going to It's not a COVID attack. It's just I get carried away. So why do I do this work? Because of this, these words. And everything over the past four years of this became true for me. The one dot linked with the next dot with the next dot. And they connected in a beautiful way that I couldn't anticipate it when I wrote that down. And I even said to Mary, are you sure that this is not... I mean, like a straight-out lie. She said to me, no, I'll show you something. I'll show you how powerful you are. I'll show you on this journey how amazing you designed to create your, your own outcome. So transmutation simply means that what you think, what you speak, your mind will bring into fruition. Now, I want to show you a little video. Thank you. Before we go to the video, I want to show you a little video of one of one of the great people in my life, one of the people that I look up to deeply, his transition is not with us anymore. Wayne Dyer said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. And why that is so true, it rings so deep, is because you only have your perspective, I only have mine, right? And if we invite in another perspective, we'll also see another angle. We see the same thing from a different angle. All right, and with that said, I've prepared a little video. I've tried to keep it short, but honestly, not everything in my life can be so short as I am. Okay, so play with me. Enjoy this video. It's easy to go through life holding on to things that are weighing us down. Guilt, resentment, doubt, worry. The problem is when we allow these things in, they're taking up space for the good things that should be there. Imagine your life is like a container. You are created to be filled with joy, peace, confidence, creativity. But if you allow worry in, it pushes out the peace. There's not space for both. You can't go above 100%. You have a limited amount of room. If you allow guilt to take up space, that's space that you don't have for the confidence you need. And the reason some people don't enjoy their lives is because their container, their heart is contaminated with so many things. They have 10% worried, stressed out over their job, 12% bitterness, mad at their neighbor, 20% guilt, beating themselves up for past mistakes, 9% jealousy, their co-worker is more beautiful. They don't realize 70% of their container is negative. They wonder why they don't have joy, creativity, passion. They only have room for 30% of what they should have. 
once we know that right now you are not living your highest vision of yourself. Now, having seen the differences between where you are and where you want to be, begin to change. Consciously change your thoughts, words, and actions to match your grandest vision. This will require tremendous mental and physical effort. It will entail constant, moment-to-moment -moment monitoring of your every thought, word, and deed. It will involve continued choice-making, consciously. This whole process is a massive move to consciousness. What you will find out if you undertake this challenge is that you've spent half your life unconscious. That is to say, unaware on a conscious level of what you are choosing in the way of thoughts, words, and deeds until you experience the aftermath of them. Then when you experience these results, you deny that your thoughts, words, and deeds had anything to do with them. This is a call to stop such unconscious living. It is a challenge to which your soul has called you from the beginning of time. Give no place to guilt. Give no place to worry. Give no place to bitterness. It can't come in and automatically take over. You control what's in your container. You control what you think about, what you choose to allow in. We all have negative emotions, negative feelings. You have to make the choice. I'm not going to give this jealousy, this bitterness, this anger, valuable space and let it poison my life. I'm going to protect what I allow in me. And every morning when we wake up, we need to empty out anything negative from the day before. Somebody offended you at work, they didn't treat you right, it's easy to let that offense stack. Feels good to carry around a grudge, but you have to be disciplined. Say, no, I am not giving this offense any room. I am not going to let it sour my day. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to the offense. Being offended is not harming them, it's harming you. It's taking up space you need for the good things that move you towards your destiny. Or you wake up in the morning and thoughts of worry come. How are you going to pay your bills? What if the medical report's not good? You'll never get out of this problem. Don't allow that in. You want your life to pick off. Begin at once to imagine it the way you want it to be. And move into that. Check every thought, word, and action that does not fall into harmony with that. Move away from those. When you have a thought that is not in alignment with your higher vision, change to a new thought then and there. When you say a thing that is out of alignment with your grandest idea, make a note not to say something like that again. When you do a thing that is misaligned with your best intention, decide to make that the last time. Every morning, empty out the guilt, empty out the word, empty out the discord. And when the impurities come, when the infection come, don't let it stay. Let it pass on through. Keep your heart pure. If you do this, I believe and declare you're going to step up to a new level with more joy, more peace, more favor, healing, wholeness, the fullness of your destiny. Powerful stuff. So I want to read this to you. It's a story coming from 1908. 1908, Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest people, sat with one of the poorest people in the world. His name was Napoleon Hill. He wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. So Andrew Carnegie, multi-billionaire, iron magnet in America, sits down with this very poor journalist, running several jobs for him to yeah, that one, for him to be able to survive just his daily life. And so Carnegie said to him, Napoleon, I want you to go and to research the 500 most successful people in the world. And I'm giving you 20 years to do it. I'm not going to pay you a cent. For a poor guy, that's a stretch. And then I want you every morning to affirm something for me. What Napoleon didn't know, Carnegie had a stopwatch under the table and he said, if he didn't answer within 30 seconds after he asked the question, he would, given the, he would have given the job to somebody else. 
And Napoleon Hill so eager to just live his purpose, his life, what he loves doing, just like you guys, what you love doing, said, yes, I'll do it. 20 years fast forward, that book came out, and the affirmation that Andrew Carnegie gave to Napoleon Hill, and this is going to look silly, don't look at my butt, he said, if this is a mirror, I want you to stand in the mirror and look yourself in the eyes, and I want you to say, Andrew Carnegie, not only will I achieve more than you in life, but I will meet you at the post and I will pass you at the grandstand. And he did that. And he said, you know, in the beginning, it was strange. My mind rejected it. I got fearful. I thought it's silly. I'm lying to myself. Much like I wrote my vision, my why, four years ago. And just so you know, I transitioned from full-time banking. I was a head of credit standard bank for personal markets into what I'm doing today because I've got a passion for this. I came through the system. That's why I wrote my book. And so Carnegie said to him, Napoleon, I want you to know that any idea that you either fear, that is held in the mind, and I'm going to explain that now to you, that is either feared or revered, and I'm paraphrasing, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most effective or possible or appropriate physical forms available. What does that mean? Your thought becomes a thing. You see, your thought has so much power. You have so much power. Your brain is so beautifully, beautifully designed. Your, your design is perfect. Yeah, I know we've got some, some crates in, in, instead of six packs. I know we can find a lot of fault on the body, but that's not who you are. You just have a body. You're not a body. I've never introduced myself and said, I'm hand or person. I'm young. And the person that speaks to you is in this body. This is just a house. Okay? So, fast forward. 20 years later, Napoleon Hill coined this book. He, he published this book. And Carnegie dies. Napoleon dies. Napoleon made more millionaires and died a richer guy than Carnegie ever could be. Mind. When your mind believes the story that you tell yourself, it must bring into fruition that which you tell yourself. You see, you're highly suggestible. If I take you and I hypnotize you and I make you believe that everything is okay and everything will work out, fear will go away. It has to. Because your mind just accepts your internal dialogue. That's how simple it is. We don't know these things and that's why you're so fortunate to be here today, to learn this lesson, to take this home. And I'll do a physical demonstration with some of you so that you can understand how this feels. It's not only a myth that I'm talking about. Your mind responds immediately. It knows exactly what you're feeding it, and it has no sense of humor at all. So whether you lie to it, whether it's true what you say to it, it doesn't care. It doesn't question. It cannot think inductively. It just takes that, and it says, listen, I'll do that for you. And there... The point of attraction starts because the law cannot be circumvented. Cause and effect also doesn't have a sense of humor. So if you keep feeding yourself with negative thoughts, law says, okay, I'm going out and I'm coming back and I bring you the negativity back. Right. So note where the power lies. You hold the magic wand, each one of you. And if I have the time, I'll do the demonstration with each one of you because once it's done, you can never forget it. You have to physically unlearn it. You get to create and to celebrate, or you criticize and make the idea bigger than you are. The thing that you're facing is COVID. The thing that you're facing as a tourism industry is terrible. And if I leave somebody out, please, excuse me, I'm not afraid with this world, okay? So I'm speaking tourism, but you may have, you know, a large hospitality, well, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're suffering. And I'm aware of that. But by virtue of your spiritual DNA, you're still bigger than what you face. And if you get this today, you will look at things, and the things you look at will change. It must. It's law. It's not Saki's law. It can't be bent. I can only let it out for first for me. So the law of transmutation implies that you need to change the narrative that you speak. 
You cannot continue to speak negative and expect a positive life. You cannot. Your brain cannot handle conflicting thoughts. So realize I am my thoughts and I realize that I'm always limited to what I say to myself, not to anybody else, to myself, right? And to what I believe about myself, about my environment and about my potential, I need to move my mind from limited to limitless. And it's easy. If you say to your mind, it's difficult to control these thoughts, your mind says, yes, it's difficult, let me show you. You can't do it. If you start lying to your mind, you say to your mind, and kids, you only lie to your thoughts. Never, ever, 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 ever may you lie, okay? Right? You only lie to the negative thought, okay? And I honor those kids for sitting here. Their minds are so hungry, they take it in. It's in their programming. So those parents, thank you for bringing them along. I need to move my mind from limited to limitless. And you need to say to yourself, it's easy. The more you say it's easy, you see your mind does not know what you feed it. It does not understand it. It just takes and says, okay. And the law activates and the law brings back. It's that simple. So understand that you create your own reality. And this reality that's created as a collective for us, we didn't ask for in Namibia, but guess what? It's there to teach us something. It's there to wake us up and we can choose to sleep, choose to resist. And the more we resist, the more resistance just create persistence. It's that simple. So you can resist all you like. It's not going away. We need to, somebody said in the audience, we need to learn to live with this thing. And you cannot live in fear. Because if you're in fear, your body sends more blood to your heart and your lungs, less blood to your brain, and that means you can't think what you're thinking about. And fear, the amygdala in your brain does not care what you fear, whether it's a rubber snake or whether it's a real snake. It just says, snake, flee, fight, get away. So it sends the blood there, and you go into what we call, in my world, neurosis. The other thing we need to realize, what I give out, I get back. I've lived a victim for 42 years. I had a bad upbringing. Bad. And as long as I said it's bad, it was bad. Nobody changed around me, I changed. And when I changed, and I changed my mind and my heart, my life changed. Not a moment before that. I was on every couch in this town. There's no psychologist in this city that does not know me. They come to me now for help. I love that. Okay? All the psychiatrists, all the duomenes, all the pastors, they know me. They drove out devils and nothing changed. So understand that you control your life. If you get this, you're going to love this because it gives you control. If you're in fear, you cannot get the next big idea for your industry, for what you need to do, for how you need to survive, because you're just in fear. And so the Bible says, and here I go with Bible quotes, the Bible says that I have not given you a spirit of fear. Why do you think that is? Because if you fear, you're out of power, you're in neurosis, you're in anxiety, and eventually you'll die. That's how it is. Okay? The opposite of that holds true also. It says, I've given you a spirit of love and of power and a sound mind. That's who you really are. We think we're victims. We think it's a religion. We think there's this old man with a white beard and a kiriki up there waiting to hit me, and this is what he's doing to me now. That's nonsense. Become a vibrational match with what breathes you. You're being breathed. You cannot take one breath on your own. This girl didn't take and that one, and then that guy, and that one. They don't take their masks off because they're aware of the sacredness of their breath. Your breath is not yours. Time is not yours. Life is not a test site. I, I tested banking systems in India for three months, and they call it SIT when you test the system. This is not SIT. It's not test. This is it. You won't get... This day, 29 January 2021, 5 o'clock over again. This is it. What you lose now, you choose to lose. Okay? And you cannot live in 21 um, January or 29 January 23 yet. Because you know what? You're not there. You're not there. You're here now. So we need to bring it back to the now. Our lives is now. If you really sit, you take a deep breath, connect with spirit. 
and you go inside yourself and you check your bank account and you check your balance sheet and you check the biggie customers that you've got and you check where you are and you see that you're all healthy, you have wonderful children, you have each other, you have a community that stands together, everything is still fine now. Your imagination works all the time, and that's where I want to take you. So, you just use your imagination for either positive or negative. It's, got, it's, it's up to you. Same Bible says, I hold before you life and death. Choose life so that you may live. If you choose death, it's your choice. It's a free will country. It's a, it's a free will system. Okay? So, be willing to catch yourself in action. Saying to yourself, Jan, what are you thinking about? Martina, what are you thinking about? Why do you entertain this thought? Do you know this thought? If you have a negative thought, for every negative thought your body releases, your brain releases cortisol, it runs through your system. It breaks down your immune system. You cannot afford fear. For every positive thought you have, every right brain activity, every stillness, every deep breath, why do you think they say to women <laughs> when they're in, in labor, I, I never did it before, but they say apparently breathe, breathe, breathe. Because when you breathe, you can't think, despite what they tell you, gentlemen, that they can do something else as well. The mind can do one thing at a time. It's all a load of old crap that we believe. So be willing to change direction. Be willing to change the direction of the momentum that you're in. If you think negative, the law of momentum keeps in. If you kicks in. If you think positive, the law of momentum kicks in. It's up to you to switch the dial, to say, listen, I'm going to stop it and, 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 and hang with me. I'm going to help you soon out of this. Keep your eye on your why. You know Simon Sinek? Why did you, what do you do? Um, I'm a geologist. Eh? Geologist. And why do you do geology? Do you love it? Yes, I do. So don't get distracted from that, because that's why you're here. Iemand moet vir my daar klippe wees, ek het a klomp op my nek. Jy sê my so lekker arms. Right. Be energy conscious. Your thoughts are energy. You create with that energy. You don't get to choose whether you create, because you are the creator in a body. <laughs> you that divine, right? You don't get to choose. You only get to choose whether I create consciously or unconsciously. Is that simple? So now that you're starting to see this, you st the, the dots will start to connect for you. And your compliments that you give yourself or the critics that you give, that inner critic, that peanut gallery that says, oh, we're going to fail, oh, COVID's not going away, that your subconscious just hears and says, yeah, you're right. Let me make that more for you. And then you create a result, and you look at it, and you say, I don't like this. Emerson said something beautiful back in the day. He said, stand guard at the portal of your mind. That is where we're going next. So here you are. You think, and this part of you represents your conscious mind. In other words, your intellect, your adult mind, your ego. What do you think? That's 5% of who you are. The rest is programming. Okay? And the programming, this is the screen in the keyboard of your laptop, and this bottom part is your software. You've been programmed. Between the age of 0 to 7, you receive stuff that you make yours. I work with people all the time. I change unconscious processes in the subconscious mind. Here's an interesting fact. This part of you runs at 400 bits per second. The part below, computer speed, this part below where the software sits, where you have no idea what sits there, runs between 20 and 40,000 bits per second. It's so much faster. And if you get triggered because you worry and you doubt and you worry and you doubt about something that's not yet happening, it's in the future, it's what you assume, it's your imagine using negative or in a negative way. You bring that to you, and all you do, you send a message from your conscious to your subconscious. Fear is triggered. Guess what happens next? You start to vibrate lower. Anxiety. Then you start to suppress your feelings. Now you left behind a mask. If you, was like, if you were like me, when uh, pre-42, I did all the, the things that the fathers don't want their children to do. All of it. Because it made me feel better, <laughs> made me feel alive, made me get out of it. It doesn't work, right? That's a, just don't make my mistakes. Buy my book, read it. It'll help you. Then it goes from suppression to depression. And then from depression, it goes to disease. You know how many diseases 
cures, heals actually, because I just work with people's minds. I don't want to distract you, but there's a story I must tell you. It's so fresh, so, so fresh. And then disease becomes disintegration. Now we run to the doctor and say, I'm sick, I'm sick. You know what? If you start to treat your mind as sacred and you start to express your feelings in a positive way, and you, get a, you just get an outlet for your feelings, for what you're thinking, guess what? Your body will be young and beautiful. That's how it is. You designed that way. Why do you think we die so early? We're against the principles of the universe. So, I had a woman, she had a baby yesterday. Just yesterday, little Liam. Mom came to me at the end of 2019. She said to me, Jan, I can't get pregnant. And I don't know what it is. And I said, how so? Are you doing what you should do? She said, yes, I guarantee you everything is in place. She said, but I've been to two doctors. My medical aid's depleted. I can't do any more medical tests. And two doctors gave me a notice and said to me, we declare you infertile. Please go and, and adopt. You're wasting your money. Now, to you that have children that could get it easy, it may not hit so hard. But to that mother, it was everything. To that woman, she's newlywed, you know, the young couple, beautiful couple, happy, beautiful people. So she came to me and she said, please help me. We started working with the subconscious mind. And about three months, four months in, she fell pregnant the first time. I said, call the doctors. I want to speak to them. Eight weeks in, she lost the fetus. She came back to me and she said to me, I'm not giving up. If my body can do this once, it can do it again. Little Liam was born yesterday. It's perfect. It was a pregnancy. A new woman will know. There was no nausea, no nothing. She didn't pick up too much weight. It was a perfect breeze of a pregnancy. That little guy proves the testimony that I brought a few books if you want to buy it. The, the testimony of my book that you can go against what you see. It's metaphysical. Another young lady, quick story. Two weeks ago, I went into RTT session with her and I, I took her back. I regressed to where her problem for epilepsy came from. She now reports yesterday, she found me, she said, you know what, my blood work is clear. The doctor says there's nothing wrong with my blood. And now when I get a fit, I'm not unconscious. I don't fall anymore. I just drool a little bit and I cough. I don't have auras. I don't black out. How? How? Why? Why? You have to ask the question. How is this possible for some and in only some cases and not for all? And how is this affecting you in COVID? How? Okay? So that's the path of negativity. Look at the path of positivity. And I'm sorry, my division here... The, the positivity is so strong as I thought it, but just push the red, red line out of it. So sorry. See the division in your mind's eye. So on top, if you start to study and understand who you really are and how your brain works and, and how you are created in the image of the Most High, which is per perfect. He doesn't sit up there or she or whatever their entity sex is and sit and chew nails because people are dying and they're scared and their business is going down. There's no such thing as abundance. You are abundance. That's who you are. Your DNA is abundance. All right? If you start to study and understand, the thing you look at looks smaller than you all of a sudden because understanding is great power. I always say to people, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a coach. All I give to you is understanding. When you start to understand your dynamic, beautiful system, the way you made and how to control things, and you start to release and return to love and away from fear, your life must change because it's law. You create for beautiful things. That triggers faith because now I don't give up. I don't go and, and you said, no. And Rupesh, I don't agree. And Rupesh went and he went into, sorry, dude, he went, in, he went into the logical mindset, but yeah, this will happen there and then a few people and then it's a, a bigger pandemic. No, no, you're still bigger than that. You are by design. And if you study it, you'll see it. And then you'll trigger faith. And the moment you, you trigger faith, dopamine is released in your brain, your serotonin levels in your brain goes up and you start to become 
being, a being that is well. You enter a state of well-being. And yeah, the bank balance doesn't look so good, but miracles just happen. You start to become expressive. You start to become accelerated in what you do because you love. You don't focus on the future. You bring your mind back into the now. You become at ease and you become more and more creative. So again, it's two schools of thought. You know, for years now, we've lived kind of in the middle. It was okay. There was hiding places. There's no hiding place anymore. The universe has no sense of humor anymore. It's either the scared part or the love part. That knows something good's going to happen to me. The dots will connect. A beautiful thing will come out of me. And you know what's so interesting? In the, f in the previous depression in America, more millionaires came out of it that w than went down in it. It's fact. Go look at it. And if you're going to look at what is wrong with your life, guess what? You, w w you, you energy. So, you just e so this is wrong, so what comes back to you wrong? Your mind can't say stop looking there. You need to choose not to look there. You need to choose to look at the opportunities. And you will do that the more you start to say it's easy. The dots will connect. You will get through this. You made for a time like this. You'll be so strong on the other end of this. These opportunities that will present itself to you, but you cannot get those opportunities if you focus on what's wrong with you. Because where energy goes, energy flows, it just comes back and says, yeah, you're right. Why? Subconscious, no sense of humor says, all right, true. It cannot give you what you don't ask it to do. And you ask it constantly. You've got between 70 and 100,000 thoughts in a 24-hour period. And the average human being, is 70% of those thoughts are negative and they stop and think of a 1,000. What do you think must happen with their lives? We need to find a way to plug into the source. We laptops. That's what we are. If I don't plug in this laptop and the power cable, I can't swear it and say it's a bad laptop. You need to find a way to connect to ground, to trust truth and avoid what you see. Because what you see is not bigger than you. You are bigger than it. But study, 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 study. Because up there I brought in power. That power, you can call it what you want. I really don't care. I don't do religion. I do love. That power is just love. And that power flows to you and through you, it's invisible. And how you know it's there, put your hand on your tummy and just take a breath. Just take a breath. That's who you are. You're a spiritual being, you just have a body. And so your thoughts is where you take control. It's either negative or positive. You can't, the brain cannot handle conflicting thoughts. It cannot. It'll default to the negative because it's designed to keep you safe. It'll say, oh, you need to be scared. You don't need to. Okay? So you control your thoughts. Your thoughts must become your feelings. And the feeling sits in the subconscious mind. That's your feeling brain. Okay? That drops into your body. Your body starts to vibrate. You either vibrate low or vibrate high. And if you vibrate high, you're positive, you're in gratitude. You look at what you have. You count your existing blessings. You speak life into the future. You know you create with what you think and what you look at. And it'll come to you. Or you can sit and mope here in the bottom and say, oh, this is wrong. I'm scared. I'm fearful. I'm going to lose everything. And you're right. Why do you think Henry Ford said to, to his engineers back in the day, when they had to put eight cylinders into one block, into one body, and they said, we can't do it. For months, we can't do it. And one day, he, he just had it with him. And he walked in there and said, listen, if you think you can, if you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> it's all there. It's time to just pay attention. So your body vibrates, and that determines your actions and results. If you're not happy... If you're not grateful in the morning and you vibrate low, guess what? Your day will be 80-20, like the good day, like the bad day, 80-20. But the only difference is if you connect in the morning and you start to clear out your thoughts and be grateful for what you have, immediately your body starts to permeate with good, good chemicals that the brain releases. It builds your self-esteem. You feel better about yourself. You're more confident. And then at the end of the day, 
80% is good, and the 20% bad that comes, you will handle in a different way than if you sit and complain and look at what is and make that bigger than where you are and worry and doubt about something that's still in the future. We're still good. Look at the country. Look at all the rain. Look at it. You guys are lodges. You know how it feels to have a dry lodge with animals dying. You know how it feels to have felt fires. You know how it feels to look at your animals burning in a felt fire. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. We are blessed. Okay? But if you focus on what's wrong with you, your mind says, okay, let me make that more. So 80% becomes problems, 20% is joy, and you can't even have fun in the joy. It's up to you to change your minds. And your attitude is just an expression of your thoughts, your feelings, and your results. You create your results. So if you don't like a result, call me. I'll help you change it. It's like that. I can change your mind. Martina is one of my, of my, of my clients that's doing transformational work. She knows how powerful this, this stuff is. So now on this slide, I want to read the slide to you, but I'm looking for two people that's willing to come and play with me. And I want you, uh, the, the rest of you, and don't make me, make me call you out. And the rest of you, I want you just to watch their bodies. I just want you to notice how powerful your minds are. Can I get somebody? I don't have COVID. Come, young lady. Come stand right here. No, you don't. You don't. Okay. Let me just get mine on. I hate these things. My glasses steams up. Okay. So I want you to turn like so. I want you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. I'm going to touch you not indecently, just below your, 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 your um, throat, okay? And I'm going to put a magnet right there. Listen to my voice. I put a magnet right there. I want you to start imagining that magnet. Imagine it and imagine it and imagine it and start feeling how it pulls you forward. It pulls you forward. You can't resist it. It pulls you forward and forward and forward as you imagine it, as you think of it. What happens in your body? Is it moving? No? little bit. Okay, keep doing it. Right? It's moving you forward and it's moving you forward and you can't resist it. You can't fall. Don't worry about falling. I'm grabbing you. Okay, now I'm moving it to the back. Let's see if this works. Take a deep breath. Don't worry about the people in the show. It's just you and me and God. Okay? I'm putting a magnet right here. It's pulling you back. It's pulling you back. You can't resist it. And it's pulling you back, and there your body goes. You can feel it. There you go. Thank you. Can you feel it? Yeah, I felt it. Right? Yes. Front? No? No, not so much. Let's do it again. Forget about them. They don't matter. You matter. It's you and me and God. Deep breath. And release. Putting a magnet right here. I want you to visualize it. I want you to see it, and I want you to feel it pull you forward. You cannot resist it. Even if you try, there you go. Your body will always respond to your thoughts and the pictures that you hold. Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Strange? Yeah, no. <laughs> hmm. So every time, what's your name? Darshi. Darshi. Every time you have a positive thought, I want you to remember this magnet moment. When you have a positive thought, your body moves forward. When you have a, mo a negative thought, it moves back. And that represents yourself. How do you think a body moves to a magnet that's fictitious? The mind has no sense of humor. It believes what you tell it. Okay? And that's why I'm demonstrating it to you. And the other reason is because you have a magnetic field inside you. And when I put an orange there, no, nothing happens. When I put a magnet there, your body will respond to a magnet because you're a mag magnetic field. And like attracts like. So that's something to remember. You just think what you're thinking about. Okay? And your life will change. Somebody else that wants to feel this. Come, don't say no. I'm very expensive. This is for free. Come now. Who wants to come? Yeah. Come. My geology friend. Okay. Close your eyes. Drop to your sides, your hands, just take a deep breath, forget about everything and everybody going to your body. Okay. Touching you right here. 
want you to feel the magnet, see the magnet, feel the magnet as it pulls you forward. You can't resist it, even if you try. You cannot resist it. Just think of the magnet and think of it pulling you forward, and it pulls you forward, and it pulls you forward, and it pulls you forward. And there you go, slightly you go, and your knees start to lock if you go forward more. Just think of the magnet. What does it feel like? Can you feel it? It took some time, but then I But you can feel it, right. You see, it's difficult to... Uh, change that. It's easy to? No, um, you know, to be so free in your mind that you don't... Worry about no, making no, a mistake? Not worry, not worry but mm -hmm. that you influence yourself of going forward. Okay. You do that every day with either a negative or a positive thought. I'm, I'm a control freak. I always ah. try to control ah. everything I do. Ah. So I felt how ah. I control... Mechanism. And how you resist, resist, resist. No, not resist. Consciously, you just want to be in control. That's resistance, okay? Let's do it here. Now relax. I want you to know that you're safe with me. I'll never hurt you. Just feel the magnet. I didn't even move my head. You see, there you go. When you're not in your mind, okay? Your mind knows what to do. I'm putting a magnet. Just feel your body being pulling back and back and back, and you can't resist it. You cannot. The more you think of being pulled back, your body knows what the magnet looks like. It pulls you back and back and back and back thank you right right so your mind has no sense of humor nothing but your brain is the place from which you live and I want you to make a commitment today to yourself to start embracing your beautiful brain that's the difference between you and an animal animal has a subconscious mind they can't think we can think we can think inductively or deductively, right? Okay, so I want to read this to you. Louise Hay, the late Louise Hay, a lady I loved. She said, in the infinity of life where I am, and we are just here right now, it's like almost half past five, you will still get home before curfew. Everything is whole and complete, yet life is ever-changing. We need to deal with it. She announced the age of Aquarius, which we are in now. It's flow or resist. There's no beginning and there's no end. Only constant cycling and recycling of substance and experiences. Life is never stuck or static or stale, for each moment is ever new and fresh. I am one with the very power that created me, and this power is giving me the power to create my own circumstances. I rejoice in the knowledge that I have the power of my own mind to use in any way I choose. Every moment of life is a new beginning, and as we move from the old, this moment is a new point of beginning for me, right here and right now, and all is well in my world. If you live right here, in the neck of the hourglass, that's the now. That's where all your power is. If you live in the past, you're giving your power away to stuff you can't change. If you live in the future, you're giving your power away to stuff that will work out for you. We didn't know, just to close the session off, we didn't know in March last year how we're going to get to today, but we did. The same thing is going to happen. And you're going to look back eventually, and you're going to say, you know what, Jan, you were right. I don't know how many of you have all the grey hair in the sky, but I get it now. Enjoy it. Because you choose. You get to choose. Choose life. You are protected. And whatever you believe, the Bible says, uh, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man believeth, as a man thinketh, it is so easy. So your thought creates your life experience. And you may as well believe that you are beautiful, you're already able, you're already equipped to live an amazing life. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. May I ask for questions? Do we have time or are you chasing me out? Anyone wants to ask a question, anything I can help with, let's laser coach. Anyone? No? Did I talk you asleep? Okay. Did you learn something? Yeah? Good. I've got books here. I've only brought five. First come, first serve. The rest you can get at Booked In. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and I hope you're taking something and applying it.
Don't live in a fantasy world of knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. You need to apply knowledge to change your life. God bless you.